couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to attend a really awesome maker meetup that was hosted by Moss Epoxies. And at this meetup, I got to hang out with some of the most talented resin artists and woodworkers that I know. Now at this meetup, I not only had the opportunity to learn all things epoxy resin, but I also spent some one-on-one -on -one time with really talented resin artists learning how to do some epoxy resin ocean pours. And I've linked those artists below this video, so definitely make sure to check them out. So super cool, but around the same time that I was learning how to do ocean pours and learning how to perfect them, my friend Tamar was building her son a guitar, and when she asked her son what he wanted the guitar to look like, he said, the ocean. So naturally, we thought about collaborating on a really awesome project where she built a guitar and I did the ocean pour on top of it. We're super excited about the way it turned out, and we cannot wait to show you guys. This project is sponsored by my friends at Moss. Now, if you're looking for the guitar build portion of this video, you will have to visit Tamar's channel and I've linked to her video below this one in the description. But for my video, I will be showing you the ocean pour technique as well as teaching you some of the things that I picked up at the Moss event as well as in my own workshop. So before even touching Tamar's guitar, I did wanna run a couple of practice pours at home and I did this with different resins as well as different pigments. And I'm gonna walk through that in a little bit. But essentially before anything, what I did was mix my resin according to the ratio ratio on the bottle, pour them into separate little cups, and then choose my pigments from there. In terms of the pigments I like to use, I've experimented with a couple of things, but I really like these fluid acrylic pigments that I picked up at my local art store. Now they are a little bit on the pricey side, so if you're looking to save some money, you can just use regular acrylic paints as well. They just flow a little heavier than these do. So with most of my pores, I have a dark, medium, and light blue color, and I started here with the dark blue color and just generously added it to my canvas. And after that, I then added the medium color and then the light color and blended them all together. And as you can see, I did use tape on the edges of my canvas because the resin will be pouring over the sides and I wanted the sides to look nice and crisp later. I used a heat gun to make sure that all of the colors blended really beautifully. I didn't want any harsh color lines in between any of the layers. I then used a nice clear line of resin here because this is gonna help it look like sand underneath the water later. And after this step, it was then time to add the white pigment, which will be blown around with the heat gun to make it look like the foam in the waves. One thing I did experiment with on all of these different pores was trying different pigments for the white color because every pigment flows differently and sells differently to make those really cool foam pieces. So for this one here, I did just use the fluid acrylic paint in white and it did flow really nicely, but I didn't love the way that the pattern Pattern formed once the heat was applied even using a torch didn't do it and using a torch usually helps make a couple of more cells which are those little bubbles that you see so on the next one I did decide to use a combination of the fluid acrylic with a little bit of white alcohol ink because I do know that if you apply alcohol to resin it does make a really cool effect with the pigment and I actually really really love the way that this one worked it not only flowed beautifully, but it also made really, really awesome patterns in the white that looked just like ocean foam, and I was super stoked on this combination. And then on the last one, I tried the same exact pigments as the other two in terms of the blue, but for the white, I just used the alcohol ink, and I actually hated the way that this turned out and could not wait for it to dry to put a second layer on top of it. It was just way too messy and way too watery. But anyway, after a few hours of letting these things dry a bit, I did go back and do a second layer on the first and the third piece, and that's when I decided that I definitely wanted to do two layers of a pour on Tamar's guitar. And after letting the pieces dry and cure overnight, I then went back and used a heat gun to remove the tape from the pieces, and this just softened the epoxy enough to make the tape super easy to remove. And once the tape was removed, I then had three different pieces with three different techniques to show to Tamar so she could choose one of them for her ocean pour on her guitar. Okay, I'm gonna screw this up. I said I was traveling, just made it to this epic workshop. I know you know that logo. Check out who I'm hanging with. The next day after a very brief road trip, I finally made it to Tamar's workshop where I was so excited to hang out with her for the day and to also get started on the ocean pour for her son's guitar. Now, resin pours are very particular about the temperature outside because if it's too cold or too hot, the resin won't cure. And unfortunately, it was way too cold to pour resin in her workshop on this particular weekend, so we did have to set up shop inside of her house. Luckily though, Tamar does have a room in her home that is primarily made of doors and windows, so it allowed for a lot of ventilation, and so we decided to take a lot of plastic, make it look like a scene out of Dexter, and set up shop there. And once we were prepped, it was time to start planning. So where should we do this? This way, that way. Yeah, I really, no, I actually, I think you're right. I do like this way. This I also don't want to hide too much of the green. Right. The green is like gorgeous. I so. still really like the wood. I, I definitely don't want to hide that. Okay. So like a third of the way up. 
this direction. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so scared. After some planning and after a lot of positive self-talk because I was so nervous that I was going to ruin this guitar she just worked so hard to build, we finally started taping up the bottom of the guitar and the sides of the guitar where we didn't want the resin to spill over onto. We then also carefully made sure to cover up any of the openings for the components of the guitar such as the pickup and the neck. And once those were properly cut and taped, it was time to start the pour, aka it was time for me to have a micro heart attack. When it came time to choosing the resin for this project, I did use Moss Art Pro resin because it was the best one that I worked with on my practice pieces. It flowed really well, it was easy to measure, it was low odor, and I just really enjoyed using it. And just like the practice pieces, I basically just mixed up the resin and then distributed it into cups to choose colors, and I let Tamara's kids choose the colors since the guitar is going to be for her son. So I'm gonna mix up some colors and you guys tell me what you think, okay? Together we picked our three blue tones and then I also mixed up some clear and some white as well and then it was ready to start pouring. Ready? It's, it's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so nervous. I didn't want to do too much resin on this pour because I knew that I would be doing a second pour so I started very conservatively by adding the colors in the same order that I added them on the practice pieces mixed them all up together, blended them in, added some clear, added the white, and then used my heat gun to do the rest of the work. Not gonna lie, I was insanely nervous to do this pour and the entire time I was totally doubting myself, but at the end of the process, the first pour ended up working out okay. I had a lot of detail in the lacing, the colors weren't as vibrant as I wanted them to be, but I basically used all of this as a learning experience for the second pour, which we did a little later after waiting a couple of hours. So we're gonna add more color over this one and bring it out here. But I don't wanna touch this because the selling looks really good and I don't wanna destroy whatever's happening here. So this will be a really cool first layer. We'll wait a couple hours and come back and do the second layer. And after a few hours and tons of snack breaks, it was time for the second pour. Okay, round two. I'm just as nervous now as I was before. All right, we so also. we're gonna go deeper colors. So I guess I'll start and then you tell me like where you want more color and then We'll spread it all out and see what we think. Awesome. Okay. Sound good? Ready? I think so. I don't Set. know. I don't know if I'm ready. ready. No. You're ready? Now, as you can see, I did use much deeper colors for the second pour, and they were turning out way more vibrant. All right. Still breathing. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Tomorrow, how are you doing? Are you having a heart attack yet? No. It's so cool. I like the shape. This, that's going okay, so now yeah. I'm going to mix up the colors and I want you to tell me if like you're happy with how it looks when it blends. Ready? One of the things that I loved most about working with Tamara was that she was so positive. She completely trusted in me from the minute I walked through the door and I totally second guessed myself a thousand and one times because I just didn't want to mess up this gorgeous guitar that she spent so many weeks working on. And since her and her son had their own vision for this guitar, I really wanted to make sure that she had a very loud and proud voice in the process so I did keep checking in with her to see where she wanted to add things, how the colors were, and so on. Alright, so I'm going to add some fun stuff. So do you want like another harsh one coming across? you want small ones? I think another harsh one. Maybe, Maybe following this color yeah. here, right? At this point, we were both super happy with the pour, so we decided to leave well enough alone, and the last step in my resin pour process was to just brush the sides to make sure that all of the resin covered the side of the guitar. Now, after this, I did leave the guitar with Tamar, and I did go home, and she had to deal with the rest, including taking the tape off and then finishing the guitar, so definitely make sure to check out her video so you can see what she did to finish the process. Overall, I was not only happy with how the second pour looked, but how the first pour came through the second 
second pour, you could see all of the really cool layered detail in the piece. And I was just really proud of myself for going out of my comfort zone and just super grateful to Tamar for totally trusting me. Even though Tamar has been sending me lots of photos along the way in her process of finishing the guitar, when she sent me these final photos, I could not believe that I was the one who did the pour on this guitar. I feel like it turned out really awesome and I'm honestly so proud and just so thankful that Tamar totally trusted me. Honestly, the best part in all of this is that Tamar's son was so stoked on this guitar and that to me is the most important thing because he is going to be the one who loves and cherishes this forever and ever. I really hope you guys enjoyed this collaboration and enjoyed watching something a little different than my traditional woodworking or home improvement stuff. Please make sure to go give Tamar lots and lots of love because without her, this project would definitely not have been possible. And without you guys, this collaboration and this business and all of the really cool opportunities that I get to do would not be possible either. So thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. I hope you'll subscribe for more videos in the future. But until next time, friends, happy DIYing.